I've taken a look at this web browser called Min, although I'm aware of the irony that I'm looking at the page in Firefox. But Min is a web browser that's been written in JavaScript and CSS. So it's an open source project and you can get the code off GitHub. They also provided a deb package download off their website, so it was nice and easy to install. I think they provided the install packages for various different operating systems. They've got quite a few issues at the moment, but quite a few of them are feature requests. Now, I have to say I'm maybe a bit biased towards these small web browsers or even forks of web browsers because browsers are quite complex pieces of kit and they've got to protect you from quite a few different attack vectors. I just don't necessarily trust a small team could do a sufficient job on security, especially when you look at Chrome and Google are paying out quite a lot of money in bounties for bugs that people have found. Hmm. So that's just some of my thoughts here. I would rather stick with more mainstream web browsers like Firefox, Chrome, or even, God forbid, Internet Explorer. But here we are. This is Min. And embarrassingly, I have to say, I have managed to break it. I've opened quite a lot of tabs. Uh, just to give you an idea, this is a list of tabs I have open. And what's happened is it seems to glitch now. These are tabs here that no longer have a title. And on top of that, some of the keyboard shortcuts have stopped working, like the back button. So what I'll do is I'll close everything down and we'll start properly. Oh, incidentally, in terms of the memory usage with that number of tabs open, uh, we're quite a lot. This is various parts of min that's got open. So there's 845 meg there, plus this lot. We're looking at oh, well over one gig of RAM used. Now, upon restarting the browser, we can see that memory usage is significantly lower. So what do we expect out of a browser? Well, to start with, let's go to a website. So I want YouTube. Take me to YouTube. Well, I'll switch the default search engine from DuckDuckGo to Google, so. Let's open one of my videos. Perfect. And that was playing at HD 1080 at 50 frames per second because that's what that video was recorded at. No problems there. Excellent. Same for BBC iPlayer. So iPlayer. And oh go on, we'll play a little bit of that. Oh sure, I'm age sixteen or over. Yeah, whatever. Just play the damn thing. Yes, the video plays. So I assume that BBC have switched to HTML5 now. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. I knew they had it in development, but had they actually switched to it? Well, yes, they have now. So I've opened up another tab. It goes very simplified here in that I've lost sight of the tabs. So let's open up my website. And there we are, I've got the tab switcher back. Cool, happy with that. It's lacking a back and forward button here, and I find that a little bit annoying, really. In fact, what you're reduced to in the browser is using shortcuts. So if you go up to the menus, so Edit Preferences, and you can see I can change the shortcut keys here. I did have to remap a couple because they conflicted with other shortcuts I have in the operating system. we have got a choice of the default search engine, and we can block ads as well. It has the Easy Block, Easy List, baked into the web browser. So we need to restart to apply these changes. Can't you do it now? And that's the same for changing the keyboard shortcuts, you have to restart the browser. Taking a bit more of a look in the menu, so we've got the choice here of doing new tabs and new private tabs. Good, private browsing, yes, nothing wrong with that. As I saw a quote recently, history is not made by those who use private browsing. So there's your standard shortcuts on editing text, undoing, redoing, copy, paste, viewing, can change the zoom, developer. So I've got the option here to reload the browser and also to inspect the browser. This is you know, kind of a weird thing here. We get a little different view, long and narrow view, almost like a mobile phone display. In fact, yes, that is literally a mobile phone display. <laughs> Great, you've got the option to test out your website in different views. That's a nice feature for website developers. So window, minimize or close, and help is just learn more, and that takes you back to the GitHub page. New private task. 
let's close this go back to normal web browsing view right new private tab okay literally is private tab not private window that is another thing with this uh, we have the option to do tasks so you can group selections of tabs not different windows but a group of tabs let's try the ad blocking go to ebay ebay has lots of adverts down the side of the page nvidia 1080 <laughs> yeah right oh actually we do have one uh, several results but no adverts see the ads have been blocked excellent the scrolling is very long-winded yeah that's as bad as chrome look one scroll line oh that is pathetic it's gonna take me ages let's just pick up the scroll bar and drag it that's not necessarily a glitch in your operating system because KDE does scroll quite a few lines at once. I think I might know the answer as to why it does that. User agent string. Min identifies as Chrome version 51. Okay, based on Safari as well. Why? Well, I suppose it wouldn't make sense to identify as Min because most websites will have never heard of it. The ACID 3 test passes with flying colours. You should not see this at all. I did try HTML5 test, but, well, I tried this yesterday and wouldn't open. I'll give it another go. Oh, it does open this time. Your browser scores 520 out of 555. So Chrome scores 521. Firefox doesn't want to open it. <laughs> Okay, so Min is very much standards compliant when it comes to HTML5, and that is good, that is what we need, that is what we're working towards this modern day and age. And when I went to the ITV player, it didn't like the fact I lacked Flash in my system, but tough luck, I'm not installing it. In terms of add-ons for this browser, well, there aren't any at this point. So no different themes, no different add-ons to have. I think one of the main features I would have liked it to have had is a back button. It doesn't have that though. Yes, you've got a task switcher. That's nice. You can switch to different tabs easy enough. I still maintain my reservations about it being 100% secure because we don't necessarily know. All I can say is the other browsers have vulnerabilities. All of them. Does this one? I don't know yet. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't.